Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is a chart of silver crossed over the first majestic silver core price. So this is the weekly chart, and you can see here on this chart that uh, for the longest time, you can see it goes back to 2003. So this pretty much contains the entirety of the silver bull market. Um, we had some bounces back in 1998 with the Warren Buffett buy, and uh, then there was the long bear market. But for the most part, this chart contains everything of relevance. Now, what's interesting about this chart is the the beta, and I've explained beta before. Basically, the beta on something is the tendency for two markets to trade together. And it's a calculate, I believe a perfect beta is one, and it's a variation between, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, between zero and one. So essentially, during this time frame here, this 2005 run up, late 2005 breakout where silver broke out through eight bucks and 10 bucks, the beta for first majestic silver and silver was approaching one. It was very, very close. You can see that the lines are hardly distinguishable. A little bit of noise here. And then we had uh, a big move in silver and uh, first majestic didn't follow with this bear stern thing and then a crash. Then you can see that they both kind of managed to take off in uh, the 2010 rally, big, big rally. But what is fascinating to look at now is the just the big difference between the two where we're at. You can see that um, here's silver down here, just kind of barely even eking out a gain. And here's first majestic here, almost into new highs. Uh, doing the comparison, you can see that first majestic is trading at the equivalent of a $42 silver price. So th that's a really big expectation. Now, as I'm sure most of you know, First Majestic is Keith Newmeyer operation. He's always hitting the um, alternative silver blog, talk, radio, YouTube interview circuit, uh, kind of openly touting the conspiracy theory and all that stuff. So. It, it very well could be that a lot of the interest that's going into the stock is coming from that community. And, and you all know my position on silver stocks, that uh, it's, a, it's a loser's game as long as silver is manipulated in price. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get a home run. And we're going to look at some cryptocurrencies, and you can get home runs in cryptocurrencies, but you can also uh, have dead money for a long time. And that's why you have to cut your losses, because if you buy something and it goes down, it could go down for a long, long time. So, again, to emphasize what I say about silver stocks, if you're in First Majestic Silver, if you got in and in January, you can see that's when this took off. We had basically a $3.50 price and we're up to $21. So if you were piling in at that point, then you're great. Um, but chasing it now, that's a very questionable proposition. But what is the meaning of this divergence? Uh, this divergence is clearly an unprecedented thing. You can see when we go to the daily that the bait is fairly tight. We're talking about a 0.8 to 0.9 and then right here the beta completely breaks I mean if we're looking at the latest dates here the beta is we're almost trading opposites um, silver is just not following this stock so let's pull it out to the monthly and try to speculate on what this means uh, either this means that this is it this is the big one and you know, First Majestic is going to break out into new highs and take out the pennant and just go to the moon and then silver will follow it or this is going to fail and uh, we're 
in another episode or another chapter of the manipulation game. And this has been going on for a very long time. I'm going to show you here when I deal with the Deniger issue and my history in talking about this kind of stuff that this stuff goes on for a long time and it goes on far longer than anyone can even imagine. People come and go in this space and uh, the stuff just goes on. So let's jump over to, well, I'm going to take you over to real quickly the another story here on Venezuela's madman, this Maduro, this fat, psychopathic, Jesuit, liar, idiot. I just, this man, he's got to go. But uh, he, he's threatening to jail the executives of Kimberly Clark who manufacture diapers and things like that because they pulled out of his country. Well, he pulled out, they pulled out because he can't, they can't source within the country. They can't source the stuff they need to manufacture. So this is just a, a lunatic. Uh, the reason why he's threatening to have them arrested is because they laid off people and closed a plant without asking permission. And uh, you can see the first comment there. It says everything. Pepsi PepsiCo had to shut down production as well because there was no sugar. This liar will say or do anything to place blame on others. So this guy, he's going down and he's going to take his place in infamy. He's just a, just a disgusting individual. But that's enough on that. That It's gone on longer than I could imagine that would go on. But it's going to end and it's going to end very badly for Maduro. Now, I wanted to answer a question here real quick. This is a question that is on the video from the 16th, which is about the Eagle allocation. And this is one that Da Vinci, uh, da Vinci J15 asked. And if you're not familiar with who Da Vinci J15 is, he is a person who I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Now, he, he was a silver guy from the very beginning and really was one of the first ones to discuss and really analyze the silver manipulation and, and, and the mind control and all the stuff that's going on. He, but he was also a person who, I don't know if his, his videos are still up, they may be, but he was also a person who jumped on the Bitcoin thing before anybody did. He was actually the person that convinced me that this was the real deal. And uh, he set up an amazing a business of uh, a lot of miners. I mean, he had, uh, at one point he did a tour of his, I think he bought a, a office space up in Canada, and I think he's now down in South America, but he bought an office space in Canada and put up a bunch of miners, and he was mining Bitcoin way, way early. So, and also he's somebody who sent me some coins to help me out when I had a lot of coins stolen from me. So he's just a, a guy, I can't say enough about him. Um, he's just a fantastic guy. But uh, it's a question he's asking here. Uh, way to go on your trade on BTM. I missed that coin. I have lots. I have lots for coins, but I don't day trade them. I little old lady them, meaning I look for low price coins and sell half on a double and then rebuy when they're low. How do you find breakout coins? Check out my Twitter. It has charts of my uh, wins and buys. And then he lists his Twitter. So uh, just to answer the question real quick here, what I do on a daily basis is I go to this site, which is WorldCoin Index, and there's a link up here for trending coins. So I click on the trending coins, and what they do is they list the, the, the highest percentage return coins. So that's the first place that I look for something that is kind of a breakout. Now, you have to dig much deeper and you have to really analyze a lot to figure out if this is something you want to chase. Now, one that's really hot right now is this Steam. And there's a couple of coins here. I, I'm not sure what this deal is. The, the market cap scares the heck out of me. You can see a half a billion dollar market cap, seriously. And uh, this goes back to, you can see this goes back to June. So I want to look and see how far back it goes. It goes back to May. And you can see, uh, I'm going to want to see the percentage return here. And you can see it went from $0.23 to, well, 
but basically 0.2 dollars to where we are for so we're talking a 20 fold return on the coin that's a little steep for my blood something that i wish i would have gotten here but i didn't so that's uh sorry about the the uh, member site there but let me mute that real quick here but so it's it's really hard to get the breakouts right when they happen uh, that's something you'd really have to sit there and refresh stuff on a daily basis. But the first thing I check is trending. The second thing I check is the exchanges. And uh, you can see here the number of markets. I generally disregard um, most of these at the top because you can see the number of markets they have. Four, three, three, three. This is just Bitcoin and Litecoin. But Poloniex is here with 94 cryptocurrencies listed. Uh, then you have the other big one is Bittrex. Uh, the one that's listing this, uh, um, there's a new coin called Putin coin. I bought a little bit of that. We'll see what happens with that. But, uh, is Yobit. This is kind of the site where you can get anything listed. And, uh, so those are the ones I watch. I, I watch Poloniex first of all. And by the way, Poloniex was only trading about $700,000 worth of 24-hour volume back when uh, Cripsy was going under. As soon as Cripsy went bankrupt and there was no place for the coins, a lot of the coins, all the, all the traffic and volume went to Poloniex. And you can see now they're doing $15 million a day in cryptocurrency traffic. And that's mainly alternative cryptocurrencies. So that's another thing I'll look for. I'll go right to Poloniex, and then I'll do a couple of things here. I'll look at the 24-hour um, volume, and that's where they're listed. And then I'll click on the individual coins. Now you can see the hot one today is definitely Steam. It's in number two right behind Ethereum. So I haven't had time to investigate that. So that's basically what I do. And then it has to meet a lot of criteria. It has to be something that's breaking out but hasn't made huge gains. And then uh, I don't follow. I have not been following Da Vinci's recommendation. And I definitely should have done that with Bitmark. I think, uh, let's see if it's on here. It doesn't appear to be really high in volume now. But uh, I definitely would have done better if I would have followed Da Vinci's advice on Bitmark, which was to sell half and, and then hold on to the rest. Because I bought in here. Uh, somewhere in here on the breakout. I sold somewhere in here, but I should have just sold half. Then, of course, I would have been sell attempted to sell the other half up here. And you can see it made a bottom and now it's starting to rally. So great advice from Da Vinci. Now let's get over to the Carl Denninger article because uh, this is, well, it's not really disturbing. It's kind of predictable. Carl is a little bit of a drama queen. We'll just say that. And he's a person I've disagreed with for quite some time because he's uh, like a avid deflationist. And uh, I, I think some of his deflationary arguments are bogus. But uh, this is interesting here. He's, again, just making a big issue. I'll read it at the very top here. Uh, um, it's about the rule of law. And he says, seriously, folks, you don't understand why the ticker has faded to black. And so... He's talking about, uh, apparently, uh, someone said that, oh, he's done. He's giving up. Anyway, let's read a little bit of this, and then I'm going to comment on uh, corruption and, and uh, my uh, involvement in exposing it. Did you go get your drink, consume it, and think? Good. You may now continue. This site was founded back in the early part of the financial crisis, spring of 2007 to be exact, because the rule of law was being blatantly disregarded, specifically with regard to prompt corrective action and banks that were paying out dividends with fictitious earnings. Did anyone go to prison for that? No. Did anyone go to prison for selling good investments to clients that they described in their own internal emails and recorded in internal conference calls as vomit and dog squeeze? No. Did anyone go to prison for claiming to Congress and all testimony to Congress is under oath that they were adding liquidity to the system during the meltdown when I found in public records that in fact over $60 billion was pulled from the system into the, Le into the maw of the Lehman collapse? That facially appears to be perjury, incidentally. The answer is, again, no. 
Did anyone get prosecuted for the felony of perjury and filing literally hundreds of thousands of knowingly false documents in the foreclosure actions across the country? No. And in fact, you know the story there. They created MERS. They created a new system and then uh, imported all the lies into it or they just created new lies. How many hundreds of thousands of Americans lost jobs and homes as a direct result of this? How many lies were ruined now, ask this. How many people were made whole on the damage they suffered as a result of these acts, all of which were facial violations of the law? None. It is broadly illegal to price fix via any mechanism where market power exists. So say, so says 15 United States Code Chapter 1. Go read it. Virtually the entire U.S. medical system operates on business models that are facially in violation of that section of the law. The latest out outrage is an off-patent device called EpiPen used for severe allergic reactions. If you need one and don't have it, you have a very good chance of dying. They cost about $60 10 years ago and are about $100 today anywhere else in the world except here in the United States where they're $400. And if you get on a plane, buy a bunch and bring them back to sell to make a profit, undercut the price, you go to prison. The exact same sort of price fixing with the direct support of the US government and the FDA is present in virtually every area of medical practice from drugs to devices to hospitals. All of this facially appears to be illegal were I to even had a discussion with a competitor on fixing prices when I ran my internet company, that would have been a federal offense. And he goes on. So apparently he's quitting. The corruption has gotten to him. And uh, like Jennifer said, well, he'll probably be back. So he's kind of doing a bit of a drama queen moment here. And I understand. It's very frustrating. There's no question that our medical system is is utterly corrupt. It's hopelessly corrupt. It's the worst system you could even imagine. It's completely uncompetitive. It is. Uh, it has cures that don't cure. Uh, doctors are the biggest killers in the world. It's a horrible, horrible system that we have here. If you need medical care or dental care, I highly suggest if it's possible for you to get on a plane and go to Mexico where you have free market medical systems or Thailand or somewhere overseas you can get things done really, really cheap from very qualified doctors. And you don't have the FDA and all these uh, psychopaths in the United States breathing down your neck. Uh, but, but let me show you uh, kind of an example from my past of uh, what I was doing and how, I, how long I've been battling this thing. So this is a page that I had uh, back in the day, and you can see here, actually, this goes back to 1996 in the Wayback Machine, but uh, or actually 1995, but my page, it started roughly around that time. At that time, I was just getting into the internet. I had some connections with, I believe, CompuServe and others, but... The internet had just come out, and this was an ISP that I was on called Europa, and it was a, um, basically at that time what you had to do is just sign up, get a f series of floppy disks with different things. Uh, this was the beginning of browsers. At that time, there even wasn't a Netscape. There wasn't an Internet Explorer. There was just something called Mosaic, and there was an FTP client, and there was something called Gopher, and there were other things. But the internet was just in it being born at this time. And I had a public page, and it was called Corruption in America. And this is what I had. This page is dedicated to exposing corruption in the United States, wherever it may be found. Unfortunately, at the present time, this includes the government, business, the courts, the media, and the church. I should have put uh, the medical establishment. So... Here's some stuff I had back in 1995. I had a full archive of Conspiracy Nation, an archive of Sherman Skolnick's articles. Sherman Skolnick was a uh, corruption fighter in Chicago. He's long dead now, but he successfully sued and brought down many judges in Chicago for corruption. He was in a wheelchair. He had actually lived in an uh, armed camp to keep from being assassinated. I had the Grab homepage mirror. J. Orland Grab was the one who wrote 
the article called The End of Ordinary Money. And this was actually the precursor to Bitcoin. I have quotes from this on my Bitcoin channel page, but basically he explains the importance of cryptography and how it's going to change the world. This is back in 1995. And uh, then I have the Bible on here and some exposures of Satanism. So you can see I, I put a disclaimer here or an explanation of our purpose. And this is what I said. Corruption in America is not about militias. And again, this was uh, around the time when the Oklahoma City bombing had fallen on the heels of Waco. When I saw both Waco and the Oklahoma City bombing, that was when my eyes were opened that the Clintons... And the people in power were flipping the switch as far as terrorism and that they were going to change the script and uh, make it uh, something different that we'd never seen before. So I was aware when I watched that stuff live that we had some serious corruption and hoaxes and it started way back then. So this is the quote, corruption in America is not about malicious, it's not about terrorism we do not advocate violence or revolution. Our interest is crime, specifically the crimes which go unpunished every day, the crimes committed by those in power who are at this time accountable to no one. We do not need new laws. We need men who will enforce them. As long as the laws of this country are not enforced and the criminals in our government and media go unpunished, we will speak out against them. So that was me in circa 1995. So I would say to Carl, well, buddy, uh, there's a lot of the, a lot of us who have been at this for a very long time. The corruption goes way back uh, most of our lifetimes, and uh, there really isn't another choice except to fight it. It, it may end up being a losing fight but at least you were on the side of truth. And uh, so I can speak as one who's done it, that I've been in this game for a lot longer than Carl Denninger has. And uh, it, it's not the time to give up, but it's, it's time to double down and uh, to just keep on fighting. And we'll talk to you next time.